bloke's world. If you find yourself enjoying this video today, hit that like button, or you can hit the subscribe button, or you can hit both, that would make me very happy. So this video is going to be about the juice block. Now this speaker is made by the same company that make the very bright, very powerful power banks. And they have a few more speakers in the range, but I managed to pick this one up. So this is sort of a, a um, cheaper speaker coming in at around £35 at the time of making this video. So just taking a quick look around it, it seems very, very well built for the price and feature packed. It comes with a auxiliary and charge splitter cable. So this, so you've got your auxiliary there, your micro USB there, not your USB there, sorry. Which gets fed into a micro USB. You stick it in the back of the speaker and boom, you're ready to go. It has Bluetooth and NFC pairing. I can't demonstrate the NFC pairing because I don't have a device that has NFC pairing at the moment. It also comes with a nice little carry bag. You can see the logo on there. So we'll take a quick look around the front of the speaker. You can see you've got a five watt driver there. I believe that's about 50 millimeter, I'd say that is. You've got the, I don't know if you can see it there, the speakerphone microphone. And along the top of the speaker are the play, obviously, big letters say play, button, the volume up button and the volume down button. The volume up and volume down, as on most speakers, double up as um, skip button and a rewind button. And the play pause button also doubles up as call answer and call end for the built-in speakerphone. And I believe there's not a um, sort of soft bit on the top here, I believe that's for the NFC, but I'm not 100% sure. So moving around to the back of the speaker, you have your power switch, your charge and auxiliary splitter cable input, your status light there and your charge light. So power button is multifunction, so you've got to slide it to the middle if you just want auxiliary and the blue light just stays solid. And if you want Bluetooth or NFC, you slide it all the way to the right as you see the light will flash and then once it's paired that will go solid blue like the auxiliary. DC and auxiliary is by micro USB cable so stick that in there. There you go, job done. Your power light will flash red when, so it will go solid red when charging and solid green when fully charged. So to charge this speaker I used my laptop, the USB on it and it seemed to charge fine. You can get roughly six hours playback on Bluetooth, but obviously that depends on how much you crank it and what sort of music you're using. And 10 hours on the auxiliary input, but again, depends on how loud you have it and all the other different factors. The speaker is IP65 rated for dust and water ingress. So whether that means you can throw it in a pool, I don't know because I haven't tried that yet, but I probably will. <laughs> But judging by this flap here, very similar to the JBL Charge 3, it's got a little lip there, so I'd assume, while it probably wouldn't keep like 100% water out for very long, I would assume it's waterproof at the minimum, but obviously don't go and throw it into a pool, because I'm not sure if it is fully submersible. And dust, you see it's not going to be a problem for dust, dust isn't going to get in there. It's also shockproof. Hence the big rubber cover around it. So yeah, for £35, this is not actually a bad little speaker. But obviously, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It matters what it sounds like. So let's give it a go. What I like about this speaker is if I just turn it on to auxiliary quickly. Is if you hold the button, the volume up, it makes that tone. And if you hold volume down, it makes a tone as well. So you don't have to sit there, keep pounding the button thinking, is that as loud as it goes? Is that as loud as it goes? Because it will tell you when it's as loud as it goes. Now the only problem I've found with this speaker <coughs> is when connected to a Mac, which is what I use to test all the speakers, it doesn't seem to respond to the Mac volume controls. You can hear the Mac volume controls through it, but it would only respond to the complete zero volume control on the Mac. However, it does work with the volume control on YouTube and iTunes I've found. However, it does work with iPhone built-in volume controls and that's mostly what I use and even on Mac you can still adjust the volume with the 
manual volumes on the speaker. So stop rambling on and let's give it a sound test. So as always, 25, 50, 75 and 100% volume. Let's see what happens. Okay, so to start off, we need to pair it to the Mac. I do like that startup sound as well. There we go, so that tone means it's paired. So let's crank it out. So you may have noticed that we are in a different surrounding than we were just a few minutes ago. That was because unfortunately, the song I used to demonstrate the juice block was flagged up on copyright when I uploaded the video to YouTube. I'm not sure why, because it was advertised as a copyright free track. So what I'll do is, same as always, 25, 50, 75, then up to 100% volume with a song that I know is copyright free. So let's crank it out. Okay, so as always, I will put the volumes in the bottom left hand corner of the screen here and we'll start it off at 25% volume. Here goes. I could stay like this forever following you. Just don't get too far and I'll be right where you are. see how much that little speaker does move in there so it's quite impressive. Now I have to say for a speaker that size that was not actually that bad at all. I did expect a bit of distortion at full volume. I mean there was, from being really picky there was probably a tiny little bit but when you think well 5 watt speaker in a completely sealed enclosure, no passive radiators, no baseboards, nothing that was actually shaking the table. I don't know how much justice the iPhone microphone did, but that was very, very impressive indeed. I always say don't go above 75% volume, just because the clarity does lack a little bit, but for the price of this speaker and how much power it's got, I was expecting a lot more distortion than that. So overall, I'm very, very impressed with this speaker. It's very well built for start, very, very, very well made. It looks very, very tough. It's water resistant, which I always like, because especially in the Great British weather, you never know when it's gonna rain. I forgot to mention, it also comes with this carry strap, which just gets around your wrist quite nicely. So that's handy. You can put it on a bag or whatever you wanna do with it. It sounds very good. It's very, very loud for the size of it as well, which I quite like. And it's really, really clean. Very, very clean sounding indeed, and good battery life. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my review and demonstration of the Juice Block. If you do want to know anything more about this speaker that I may not have covered in this video, please just put a comment down below. If you want to go say hi, put a comment down below as well. Again, like if you enjoyed, dislike if you didn't, so then I know who's liking and not liking. Subscribe if you want to see more. Like I said, I have got a few more head-to-head -head videos coming up as well as a review and demonstration on the kit sound boom bar. So thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you very soon.